Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us today. Today my guest is going to be Dr. Dave Rethorst, who is the Director of Outreach and a veterinarian from the Beef Cattle Institute here at Kansas State University. We're going to talk about a very common disease, blackleg in beef cattle and other clostridial diseases. I'm glad you joined us. Stay tuned and enjoy our show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer for more information visit cowsprayer.com folks welcome to doc talk dr dave welcome to doc talk again glad to be here it's always good to have my friend and colleague dr dave rethorst who's a veterinarian here at kansas state university in the college of veterinary medicine and is the director of our outreach program at the beef cattle institute and dr dave we're going to talk about something that you've had a little bit of experience with. Just um, just a case or two. <laughs> yeah, um, we're going to talk about, about blackleg and, and it's one of those things that there is not a more used vaccine in the United States beef industry. For, no, for, absolutely uh, not. And and there's good reason. Right. But uh, one, it, it works. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you know, we, we have Let's go back to kind of the history and what, what blackleg is and, and what it causes. Well, blackleg is caused by a member of the Clostridial family, Clostridium shovii, and it's a soil-borne organism. So, you know, when we get real dry soil conditions like the drought we ex experienced, we get more of these spores coming to the surface. We see, but uh, a veterinarian by the name of O.M. Franklin developed the first blackleg vaccine back in the 1800s because they were, these calves were dying and they were finding these real dark gaseous lesions in the muscle and he figured out that he could make a vaccine with these clostridial spores and prevent the disease. So very common disease and a vaccine that works very effectively. And one of the things that always amazed me in, in cow-calf practice and, and that is you can't predict there are some pastures that have a lot of spores that are black leg pastures and some black, some pastures that don't. And, and within the same section of land, you could have people with quarters or, or with eighties and here's a black leg hot spot and here's not. Right, right. There's, there's areas that are endemic. I'm familiar with an area in the northwest corner of the Flint Hills that there's quite an area that is black leg endemic. You just have to vaccinate pasture cattle, you know, and even the soil that's in their feedlot pens has black leg spores in it. Yeah, and it's and it's also one of those things, it always seemed like that when we have a, a calf die of black leg, it's always the best calf, the most aggressive growing calf, and that probably has something to do with it foraging and, foraging and, and putting yeah. itself at risk. Right. So, so when, when uh, you know, kind of talk to me about, you know, you've had some black leg cases. Dead calf in the pasture is kind of the... It, dead calf in the pasture is usually what we find. There's times we'll see a calf that, you know, is walking real stiff, particularly in the hind legs or something, and be drought conditions. And, you know, particularly if you've lost a calf already, you'll start seeing these lame calves. But and sometimes we can shut that off with some vaccine and some antibiotics when these see these calves alive, but usually our first hint is just finding a dead calf in the pasture. 
And then from that, getting a, a diagnosis can uh, requires yeah. getting samples, getting them to the D lab, but uh, absolutely. Get get an necropsy done. Get the samples to the D lab. Make sure that's that's what we're dealing with. Yep. But, and always, uh, it always amazed me that when you would make an indention on on there, you could hear the crackles underneath the skin and and yeah. and leave an indention in right. the spot It'll where crack you crack and pop, and and you cut into that muscle, and it's just a real dark, dry, gaseous muscle. Cool. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to start talking about vaccination protocols for blackleg. Stay tuned. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Rebecca Calder was recently awarded an Amstut scholarship. She grew up in Vermont and fell in love with cows at the age of five. In high school, she spent a weekend with a veterinarian and knew her future was sealed. In college, she received an internship at the Plum Island Animal Disease Center. Rebecca hopes to work in a dairy or mixed animal practice in the Northeast after graduation. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk, Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Dave Rethorst. And we're from the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University, where Dr. Rethorst is a veterinarian and serves as the director of outreach for us. And, and spends a lot of time, he's, he's got a lot of experience in the field as 35 years of veterinary practice, 40 years of veterinary practice, and, and still continuing to see cases and, and function um, in the field with people here in our industry. But let's get to some of the strategies of preventing blackleg. And, and I think the, the biggest strategy that we want to talk about first is let's start out with, you know, the baby calves and, and work through, Brandon, we'll just kind of go from birth to, to slaughter and, and we'll cover this, but when are, you know, if we have black leg and we know black legs in the pasture, how early can we vaccinate these calves? We, we can vaccinate these calves at, at birth if we need to. Uh, you know, one of the members of the Clostridial family is Clostridium perfringens and, and that plays into our, our overeating, causes our overeating and some of the things we see in baby calves. So we've got a lot of producers using black leg vaccine at birth just on preventing the overeating form of the disease, but they also get some true black leg protection there. So if we're in one of these real endemic areas, we can do it at birth. Uh, you know, typically what we do is at spring branding time, you know, we'll come in and, and give those calves a, a seven way black leg and then we've got good protection until fall and, and usually we'll give those calves another black leg as we're getting ready to weed. Okay, so, so if we're in an endemic area and, and we're, we're going to give these calves, a, you know, we'll, we can do it right off the bat when we're tagging them. Right. And that's a good chance to grab them and, and give them a black leg. And that's where I hear most people, you know, 
if they're going to give one earlier than branding, which folks at branding, we're talking three months of age, okay, three, three to four months of age. And so another opportunity is, is at branding because then those calves are starting to forage a little more. Right. Not just relying on, on, on mother's mama's milk. milk. They're starting to nibble and graze and get closer to those spores. Right. And so we're definitely, and, and we're coming into that drier time of the year. Usually. Absolutely. Right. So, so um, you said a seven-way product. Right. And, and so go ahead. Okay. So the seven-way product is seven strains of clostridium. We've got our Chauvii, which causes a black leg, and then there's septicum and novii and two strains of perfringens and a couple others in there that right well, that are more um not necessarily causing issues but but when we developed these vaccines they were easy to grab a hold of and, right. and we we have those antigens in there and there are also products that leave those antigens out right I mean, you can get a two-way or, or four-way four or, or seven-way right. um, to cover for those different products. But the big thing is, is work with your local veterinarian. Right. Work with your veterinarian. You know, there's there's some places that they'll routinely vaccinate cows for black leg every year just because of the true black leg disease. You know, in these drought areas, they're, they're vaccinating mature cows every year. Yep. Folks, we're going to take a break and we come back more about black leg with Dr. Dave Rethorse and we're going to move into the stalker and feedlot phases. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson, Dr. Dave Rethorse. We're with the Beef Cattle Institute, where Dr. Rethorse is a veterinarian and also the director of our outreach. And we're talking about blackleg. And, and one of the things is we left the last 
uh, segment talking about ramp strategies and things like that, really work with your local practitioner. They understand the, the geology, they understand the geography, they understand the endemic uh, diseases, especially if you're new to an area. Make sure you get a, a practitioner that you can visit with and, and really understand where you're living, the environment that your cows are in, and, and they, there are a lot of regional vaccination programs that, that the veterinarian can provide a lot of insight towards. Absolutely. So yeah. when these calves go to the feedlot, you said we're going to give them a black leg when we, when we wean them. So if, if, if they've, you know, talk to me a, a little bit because there's a lot of, of, you know, debate out there as far as black leg on arrival to the feed yard or to the, to the background or operation. Right. And it's, we can, as a general rule, assume that nearly all calves have a black leg early in life. Right. But the difference starts coming as we prepare for weaning. Crusty old curmudgeons like me still like to give a black leg when we're getting those calves ready to wean. Just we get another booster into them, we know we're in good shape. There's, there's places that don't and, you know, or, and these calves going into the feed yard we can see black leg cases in the feed yard. These calves go in there and if they've had to put new dirt in the pens and it's, like I said, really dry, these calves start licking the soil for some reason and, and we can start seeing black leg outbreaks in the, in the feed yard if we haven't kept the vaccinations up. And I've seen it too where we build new pens. So we expand the feed yard into a new area and we've, we've just roughed up the soil in that area and placed uh, naive calves on that. I've also seen where we've gone in and scraped pens in, in unprotected or non-vaccinated calves and, and had some some pin-to-pin black leg right. outbreaks. And so, you know, I guess my recommendation is if, if I don't know the history of those calves or I know that they haven't received black leg, Get I'm another definitely, dose in them. definitely going to use one with the lack of expense to this product. You know, the other thing is, is and you can comment to this, but as we've gone through the last 30, 40 years, we've changed the black leg vaccines. Right. They're not the 5 cc intermuscular no. products. Now they're 2 cc's and sub-Q. Right, and, and, and really tissue-friendly products, and, and our cost is, is still minimal on the thing. So they're, they're really safe to use. You know, a study we did years ago when I was in Nebraska was looking at weaning weights comparing 5cc 7 weight to 2cc 7 weight and just that difference just there was seven pounds of weaning weight just by what black leg vaccine we chose. Go into that smaller dose. Go into the smaller dose. So so we'll wrap up here folks but uh, one other thing is that revaccination however in the feedlot is is not only not necessary but can decrease intakes and 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 not cattle off feed. So, right. so if you're going to use a black leg, work with your local veterinarian. Use one on arrival at the at the feedlot if you don't know the history or if you know the animals haven't had one. More on black leg and clostridial vaccines with Dr. Dave right after this message. The BQA tip of the day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello folks, Dr. Nels Lindberg here from Great Bend, Kansas with Production Animal Consultation and Animal Medical Center. Today's BQA tip of the day, we're going to talk about pen surface management. And pen surface management doesn't just have to do with feed yards, it has to do with cow-calf producers that have any sort of pens, stalkers, starter yards, and feed yards. We all need to do a great job of taking care of our pen surfaces. We can often forget about them, we have many other things to take care of, but again, we want to maintain an excellent pen surface for these cattle. It's good for their welfare, it's excellent for animal health, and, and if we don't take care of them, can also negatively impact animal performance. We must groom these pens periodically. Pen populations, how often cattle are in them, will often dictate that. Bedding cattle will dictate that. If we're feeding them big round bales and pens, will dictate that. But again, we want to have a clean, dry pen surface for these cattle. Whether, again, whether it's a cow-calf herd and baby calves, feeder cattle, stalker cattle, whatever it may be. If we have a lot of buildup, whether it's manure or feed particle or bales, bacteria, viruses sit in there, 
and they continue to cohabitate and infect new cattle or the same cattle or baby calves creating unhealthy situations for all the animals. Let's do the right thing, take care of these pen surfaces, groom them frequently, and make them look like this pen right here. Thank you much. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. As we came back from break, Dr. Dave, you know, one of the things that, that you know, you were involved with recently was a case of a black leg outbreak in a, in a feed yard. In, yes, in feeder cattle. These were six weight feeder cattle that the guy bought in December uh, in a feedlot in the northwest corner of, of the Flint Hills here and within the last month he had calves started dying and I got involved with the local practitioner uh, and it turned out that it was black leg in the feed yard. They hadn't cleaned pens or anything but the cattle, they didn't have a vaccination history on them when they bought them and they did not vaccinate the cattle on arrival and with the dry conditions you're seeing, we saw black leg, very expensive lesson. I think they lost like eight or nine head at fifteen hundred dollars yep. a head that's can make the vaccine look pretty cheap pretty quick yeah fifty cents a head would have shut it off all right well one other clostridial bacterium that, that we typically you know we get vaccinated for all the time is tetanus right and people don't know that tetanus a lot of people don't know that tetanus is a clostridial uh, uh, species um, or, or, or that but when are we going to use the tetanus vaccine? There's, again, endemic areas. There's ranches I worked with in Nebraska. We use tetanus vaccine routinely, even when we were castrating calves, or you know, a lot of times just routinely because we could see tetanus from an umbilical infection. More commonly, with the advent of the banding that we're doing on bigger cattle for castration, for castration, we need to be giving a tetanus vaccine when we ban those cattle. Right, and, and a tetanus toxoid is the preferred method because it takes the animal seven to 10 days to, to build an immune response to the tetanus toxoid. So right. the eight-way clostridial or the eight-way blackleg with tetanus. By the time that, that we would have a tetanus problem, which is two, three, four weeks out post banding, that animal will have a chance to build immunity. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. and I think that's one of the things that, you know, you hear people say anatoxin or toxoid. Really, the toxoid is, is appropriate. Yeah. 
The antitoxin is extremely expensive and and uh, and in short supply a lot of times and and the toxoid works well and basically we can get the that clostridial tetani it's an addition to our normal seven way vaccine becomes an eight way and it's readily available. Sounds like a winner. Um, any closing comments on clostridials? Just that talk to your local veterinarian, make sure you're using an appropriate vaccination program. The, the vaccine works well and it, it's very cost effective. Cool. Well, thanks for being here. You bet. Folks. My pleasure. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know more about what Dr. Dave and I do here at Vet School, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local practitioner. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.